as Julia says, then get all your ingredients and all of your equipment so that you can just go right through the cake. Hi everybody, and welcome to my kitchen. Um, my name is Ann Allgood. Some of you might know that from time to time at the beautiful historic Jewel Box Theater, I perform in a little confection called Bon Appetit. It's an evening with Julia Child, and it's co-hosted by the delightful Julia Prudhomme and the scintillating Mark Anders on keyboards. Uh, and what I do, oh, there's the oven. It means it's hot enough. What I do in that show is I sing for 20 minutes and bake a chocolate cake on stage while being Julia Child, or while performing as Julia Child. So because we're all stuck in our houses uh, for the time being, this is my at-home version of the spoken word of Bon Appetit. Uh, well, the first thing I'll say is the chocolate cake is called Le Gâteau au Chocolat L'Eminence Brune, which is like brown eminence. It's like really fancy. Uh, there is a recipe available through the New York Times if you want to Google it. The amounts of sugar are a little bit different. I think they use too much sugar, but um, I, I'll talk you through that too. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is melt some chocolate. Oh, and I'll point out, I've got all of my ingredients and equipment over here, so I'm going to have to be going back and forth like this. You'll see the back of my head a lot. That should be fine. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is melt chocolate. We have seven ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, two ounces of bittersweet chocolate or unsweetened chocolate. I'm just going to put all those together in one bowl. And then we're going to measure out a quarter cup of very, very hot water, boiling water, preferably, okay? Uh, that was out of frame, but I just heated it up, so it should be just fine. Let me find my quarter cup measure here. I'm doing this not the way I should. Here we go. Is it a quarter cup? Yeah. And we're just gonna pour that in all at once. Okay. And then we're gonna stir it around a little bit. i use a tiny whisk and get rid of that. Stir it around so it looks kind of like that, right? Chocolate soup. And then, oh, no, I have a lid. I'm gonna cover it up. Oops, <laughs> I am gonna use this plate. I put it in a bigger, a bigger bowl than I had at first. So I'm just gonna cover it up and we're gonna set it aside and let it melt by itself. Oh, that reminds me, I forgot to do this. I was so excited to talk to you all. Um, what Julia also recommends, and this is optional, I think, if you have trouble finding it or anything, she says to use two teaspoons of instant espresso for mocha flavoring into the in, in the cake. It just gives it a nice depth of flavor and plays off the bittersweet part of that chocolate so it tastes kind of grown up. This is a scant two teaspoons because I was running out. And I can't always find instant espresso, so it could be, uh, it could be optional, you know? I'm just gonna boosh that in a little bit. There, and we're gonna take, let that go back to the melting. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is prepare our pans. Okay, so these are two eight inch cake pans. They don't match because I got them at the Goodwill. And what I like to do is I take some butter that's at room temperature and I just grab a little gunk of it with a paper towel and then I don't have to get it all over my hands. But so you want to butter the bottom and sides of your cake pan. And I'm going to do it with this one too. Then you take parchment paper, not wax paper, parchment paper, and I just unroll part of it and then use this to trace around the paper roll and uh, then cut out these little circles. And so then you line the bottom of your cake pans with parchment, right? And then you butter that too. Julia says, wax paper too. So I suppose you could use wax paper. The main thing you, is, I guess it would be safe. You don't want it to catch on fire in your stove, in your oven. But if it's got cake batter all over it, I doubt if it would catch on fire. I just like parchment better. That's how I roll. Okay, so I'm buttering the parchment. So you butter the pans, line them with parchment, and then butter the parchment. And now, then you flour them. 
Okay, and that also has to be done pretty liberally. I'm gonna take the step of not using flour. I'm gonna use cocoa to flour my pans instead, or to dust my pans. Uh, and this comes in handy. It's not necessary for this cake necessarily, but like if you're ever gonna make a chocolate cake that uh, isn't going to be iced, or where some of the cake is gonna show, and you don't want that kind of floury dust on the cake layer when you take it out of the pan, use cocoa. It doesn't show, it tastes better. And it makes the whole recipe gluten-free. Come on. So this is how you can dust that cocoa around the pan, get it up there on the sides. I'm gonna do it into this other pan so I don't get cocoa all over my kitchen. And then this is where Julia says, knock out the flour on the floor. That's not happening in my kitchen. She says, if you have a self-cleaning kitchen, you can do that. Mama's cleaning her own kitchen. I'm not putting flour or cocoa all over my floor. Thank you. <clears throat> now, the recipe calls for four eggs separated, whites and yolks. All right, I'm gonna put the four egg yolks into this mixer. This will be fun to do backwards too. <laughs> this is super fine sugar. Now, the way you make super fine sugar is you can just throw it in a Nutribullet, if you have a Nutribullet, or a spice grinder, and just grind it up. And then measure it after you've ground it, of course, because it's gonna be more dense. Um, super fine sugar is great because it blends better. It just gives an easier texture to all of it. But if you have to use regular sugar, I won't tell. It's not gonna kill the cake. So this is four egg yolks, two thirds cup of super fine sugar. I'm gonna pour that in there. Up. And now I'm going to start this blending. It's going to get loud. Well, <laughs> it's not going to get loud if it isn't plugged in. Oh, I'm a smart girl. Okay. Here goes. I was so prepared. I'm going to I'm going to set it up to moderate for a little bit and see what happens. Okay, Julia talks about something really fun. When you blend egg yolks and sugar together, you can see the color and the texture change. The egg yolks get like light lemony colored, like a lemon meringue pie almost color. They change and they, as the sugar dissolves, it makes this ribbon. So I'm gonna do this a little bit more. <laughs> Let's see that thick dissolving ribbon. The thick dissolving ribbon. There, there, see that? I should have used a spatula that wasn't yellow so that you could see the color, but see how it's... I'm also gonna scrape the bottom of the bowl. It's kind of lemon pudding-y, right? So that's how you know you've blended it enough. All right, now, I'm gonna take the chocolate. We'll see if the chocolate is melted. Now the chocolate, sure, in all conscience be melted. And it is! <laughs> Let's see if it actually is. Well, it's not as melted as it should be. So I might zap it in the microwave. Don't judge. There. Oh, now we're talking. Okay, so that chocolate is beautifully melted. And I'm gonna save this spatula out because I might need it again. Now we beat in with this, with the whisk, one stick of the best butter. And you have it at room temperature, okay, because it's gotta be beaten into this chocolate and it works better if it's soft. Well, it doesn't work at all if it isn't soft. So it takes a little while, especially because I didn't cut it up ahead of time. This is where I'd like to give a shout out to Carmen Mettler, my brilliant, brilliant stage manager and props wizard. She preps all of the ingredients for our show ahead of time. She comes with a giant like rolly cart filled with Tupperware that's full of separated eggs and melted, you know, almost melted butter and 
all the foodstuffs and she measures them all out with her adorable son, Sebastian, who's also in the show with a little cameo part. And so all I have to do is show up and play with it. I have newfound appreciation for her every time I bake this cake myself. I have more and more appreciation. Okay, so look at that. Is that not like food porn? I mean, come on, I hope you can see it. That is so delicious. I just wanna put my face in the bowl. Okay, that's gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, oh, wow. That could get us an R rating right there. Ooh. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is get this bad boy out of the way. Again, backwards. I believe we're done with this beater. And I'm gonna pour this chocolate right into these egg yolks. Now, if you're in self-isolation and you're baking this cake for just yourself, I wouldn't hold it against you if you lick the bowl. So that gets set aside. Next thing we're gonna do is whip up some egg whites. I'll just put this here. Now, this is where Julia says, make sure you have an extra set of blades Otherwise, at this point, you'd have to wash and dry the beaters. Well, I don't roll that way. What I do is step out of frame, and I come here with my little hand mixer and another bowl. Again, the bowl must be pristinely clean, not a speck of grease, or the egg whites won't whip. They are real divas. So I'm gonna unplug this one and plug this guy in. Here are our four egg whites. Yeah, Delish. And I'm going to also add a pinch of salt. I don't know why. Actually, Julia adds her pinch of salt when she's whipping egg whites in a copper bowl. And I think that the salt reacts in some geeky way with the copper. I don't know. Let me Google that for you. Okay, then I'm gonna add one quarter teaspoon cream of tartar. Every good kitchen should have cream of tartar because you want them to mount seven times the original volume. So now we start with this. See how they're foaming? See that, can you see it? They're still really thin, right? But there's, there's foam on them. So now I'm gonna set it all the way up on high. Whoa, look at that. There's a stiff peak right there, baby. See that? Now, you, it's so good that you can even do that to the bowl. Wow. Actually good. So, what this is gonna do is give the cake structure and, and we're gonna keep all those microscopic little air bubbles in the cake so that it <gasps> puffs up and, and has that kind of structure because this cake doesn't have any flour in it. And so that, so because it's gluten-free, we've gotta figure out how to make that structure happen, okay? So instead of flour, what we use is cornstarch. We take three quarters of a cup of cornstarch. We use this instead of flour in this cake. It's a light, delicate cake, but chocolate is really heavy. So we wanna lighten up that heavy chocolate structure with cornstarch and egg whites. That's not a very light it is. Three quarters cup of cornstarch. And you sift it right into the cup. And then sift about a quarter of it into the batter. Okay, so I'm gonna sift about a quarter of it into the butter. Oops, yeah, that, that's kind of a quarter. Cornstarch is a mess. It goes everywhere. You thought cocoa was bad? Oh, always the cornstarch everywhere. All right, it's all over my counter. Okay, so this, I just sifted it on top and I just stir that right in. And that's gonna make the batter a little bit stiffer. Now, particularly in chocolate cake, you want to be very sure that your batter is fairly liquid or you might have to beat it up again, Julia says. Now we're gonna take a third of your egg whites and stir them right in. That's about a third. This is all kind of what she calls eyeball to eyeball or just, you know, by your eye. I'm gonna stir this in to lighten up the batter. If you try to do it with that heavy, heavy chocolate batter just all at once, it just wouldn't work. This sort of is the way to make the batter a little, I don't know how to describe it. You lighten it up. See, so see, you can see it's not nearly as heavy. It's got some egg white in there just to temper it a bit. Okay. Now, a little more cornstarch or all of it. 
That's about all, but sift that right in. And put the rest of the egg whites on top. Whoops, <laughs> spilled. Here's where Julia says, now we're going to alternate folding egg whites and cornstarch. Not as neat as it could be. Now it's time to put the cake batter in the pans. We're gonna put the cake batter in the pans. Here we go. Now, if you were super anal retentive, like if you were baking this professionally, or if you wanted to have a perfect showstopper of a cake, or if it was some sort of competition or if you were just really, really persnickety, you might weigh these two and make sure that you have the same amount by weight of batter in each cake pan so that way each layer is exactly the same. But Julia says, just do it eyeball to eyeball. So that's what I'm gonna do. So we go like that. That's about a little less than half. Here we go. So you can see there's little clumps of egg white in there. It's fine, it's gonna bake out. And a little bit left for the cook, who would like to lick the spoon. Mm. So what you want to do is push this out to the sides so it doesn't hump up in the middle. Push it out to the sides so it won't hump up. Barely half full. You know, and then and this seems weird to me, but this is what she says to do. You knock these bad boys out on the counter just to even them out on top. It also, I think, pops some of those little microscopic air bubbles in the egg whites. Go figure. Oh, darn, look. <laughs> what am I gonna do with that? Um, uh. So we're gonna bang them on the counter. I guess make sure that there aren't any big air bubbles, right? And now we're gonna put them in the oven. Oh, 350 degrees. You should have preheated your oven. Uh, sorry if you didn't. 350 degrees for, she says 15, 16, 18 minutes. Heroes. And I have the oven rack in the lower third and I put the cake layers diagonally for air circulation. In fact, I can take a picture of that too. They're sort of diagonally for air circulation. And you can see my ugly, ugly, dirty oven door. Don't judge. So the timer has just gone off at 16 minutes, and so we're gonna test the cakes. I have a toothpick. I'm gonna get one of them out. Julia says they'll puff up and then, then they sink down. So this is kind of puffed up. And she says it should almost be set at the sides. So right here, that feels Feels set. It's been about 17 minutes now, actually. So I'm gonna get the other one out and then we'll cool them on a rack. As soon as these are cool, I'm gonna actually put them in the refrigerator to chill them so that they'll come out of the pan with a little more stability and won't fall apart because they're kind of delicate, like she says. Um, Julia recommends chilling them before unmolding them. So we'll do that and then we'll get to ice them. See ya. Hi again. Some time has gone by. It's getting dark outside. I may or may not have had a glass of wine. <coughs> Julia Child says, I love to cook with wine. Sometimes I even put it in the food. So we're gonna ice our cake now. And because I'm a baking geek, I happen to have some ganache in my freezer because that's how I roll. <coughs> and we're gonna flip them out onto a cake plate. And hopefully that'll work. There, awesome. There's that parchment, came in handy, right? And look, no floury mess because we used cocoa. I have made these little parchment strips because I forgot to do this, but we're gonna put those underneath the cake layer so that we can ice the cake without the icing getting all over the beautiful cake plate. And it will look professional and lovely. This is a fancy geeky little thing that I got from, I think, Wilton Cake Decorating. It's a little turntable. 
right? And this is a little piece of rubber matting. So I'm gonna put this cake plate on that turntable so that I can go, whoa, look at me icing the cake. The bad news is the big offset spatula that I own is currently incarcerated at the Jewel Box Theater because it's part of the props list for the actual show. So I have this teensy tiny one. This should be fun. All right, I'm gonna get this chocolate ganache glaze. Mm. See how it's a little bit soupy? Yeah, so I'm not gonna try to ice the, the sides of the cake because that would be a disaster. I'm just gonna put layers on the top. So here we go. Ooh, look how delicious. And I think that's enough. Julia says, better too much than too little. But I don't know that I can go that far with this soupy stuff. I put it in the refrigerator, but mm, it's still kind of kind of liquidy. Here's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna spread it out. See how cool that turntable is? I can just, yeah, right? So I'm gonna spread this out to almost the edge so that not too much of it spooges out the sides when I put the other cake layer on. Mm, maybe that way-ish. Ready? Come on, come on. There, oh, whew. Look, and the parchment even stayed in the pan. I'm really surprised and relieved that that did as neat a job as it did. I had my doubts. <laughs> We're just gonna ice the top of the top layer. With some more ganache. Ooh, look how delicious. All right, I'm gonna put that back out of the way. And I get to do the same wonderful thing with this little turntable. Is that restaurant quality? Is that like baking, British baking show, American baking show worthy something? So if you are gonna ice a cake like this, you could choose to have a little bit of it drip down the sides, like this is happening like that, and just be all sort of random drippage. And or you could decorate the top with some crushed almonds or pecans or some other delightfulness, or you could stick a lot of little fancy raspberries or something around the top. I'm just gonna let this be what it is. You can zoom in and just catch that wonder wonderment. I'm gonna scooch that back in. You guys, you guys can't see that because it's on the backside. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're done. Bon appetit.